The Atlanta Falcons new home has a name. Hello everyone, welcome to City Talk. I'm Thermese Thevel. The new Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta United Stadium going up next to the Georgia Dome now has an official partner. City Talk's Troy Danicus tells us just how much of an impact Mercedes-Benz will make in the Atlanta market. The most important part of any name is what, what does it represent. And I think the iconic nature of the construction of this building, the iconic nature of the fan experience within the building, this building and the experiences will represent the very best of our city and our region and our state. And that name will be Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Governor Nathan Deal and Mayor Kasim Reed joined owner Arthur Blank as he revealed the new stadium's corporate sponsor. The Mercedes-Benz logo will adorn the stadium's exterior and interior, as well as a logo on the retractable roof. We think it's going to look great on this stadium. In fact, we'd love to take you through and show you. So th with the power of CGI, we're going to show you just how great the Mercedes-Benz Stadium is going to look. So let's show the video. Word of Mercedes-Benz sponsorship of the new stadium comes just eight months after the company announced it would move its North American headquarters to Sandy Springs. But Cannon says negotiations for the stadium happened separately and only after the move was official. The Mercedes logo on the football stadium looks familiar to Saints fans. Benz is also the sponsor for the Superdome in New Orleans, a deal that still has five years left. We have a contractual obligation with the Superdome. They've been great partners with us. Uh, when we made that deal, we had no idea we were going to move to Atlanta. And we had no idea that all of this was in our future. Uh, but sometimes th opportunities come your way that are just too good to turn down. Mercedes-Benz Stadium will host more than just the NFL and the MLS. The 2020 NCAA Final Four will be held there. Arthur Blank also intends to bid for the Super Bowl in 2019 and or 2020, the College Football National Championship in 2018, and he hopes to bring the FIFA World Cup to Atlanta should the U.S. win a bid in the future. All of these great institutions and these great brands by themselves, it matters to them whose name is on the building. Financial details of the deal were undisclosed, but the partnership lasts until 2042. Mayor Reed recently announced that Mercedes-Benz Stadium will also host the SEC football championship games through 2026. For City Talk, I'm Troy Danicus. Both the Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta United FC kick off their seasons in the new stadium in 2017. Council member Ivory Lee Young Jr. is delighted with improvements along Joseph E. Boone Boulevard, and residents are also excited about the new enhancements. The Department of Public Works completed a major streetscape project from Woodlawn to Westlake Avenue. Upgrades include new sidewalks, traffic signals, resurfacing, pedestrian lighting, and bicycle lanes. This is a corridor that is long overdue uh, for redevelopment. Uh, we see each of these intersections as major commercial nodes uh, to really make a difference in the lives of all the residential communities that surround uh, uh, this, this corridor. Councilman Young worked with Commissioner Richard Mendoza to make sure this area got what it needed. To see the west side finally lifted up. Uh, to see this great park uh, that we will be dedicating probably in a few months. Um, I think it's a testament to his leadership, but also what we're all trying to do with Mayor Reed and, and all of my colleagues on council to make our city the greatest place from the inside out and touching all neighborhoods, not leaving anyone out. When you talk about the work that city government does uh, in terms of our built environment, is so fundamental to such things uh, that we hold dear as our children and their safety as they're walking down the street, our seniors being able to move from place to place. The ribbon cutting was at the future site of Joseph E. Boone Park. Invest Atlanta approved a construction grant to build a new road for the Veterans Administration Medical Facilities at Fort McPherson. The nearly 1,000 foot long road, curbs and sidewalks will replace an existing route that will become part of the new Tyler Perry Studios. The new road will also serve as the basis for a planned street grid. Some of the funds will come from the Campbellton Road Tax Allocation District and the remainder will be paid by Fort McPherson's Redevelopment Authority. Tyler Perry and the Redevelopment Board closed on the Fort Mac deal back in June. Perry will have 330 acres and the Redevelopment Authority will keep about 145 acres for future development. The Veterans Administration also has property on the site. 
Council Member Joyce Shepard hosted a District 12 code enforcement session to train residents on city code violations to explain the procedure for reporting these issues and to stress the importance of community involvement. I personally want to learn about uh, how to identify things that shouldn't be, shouldn't be there and, and how to uh, get some action from the city. And I'm concerned about uh, the neighborhood, keeping it clean and keeping it safe and keeping, it, uh, keeping the appearance of the neighborhood um, looking presentable. Shepard developed a code enforcement and city services booklet to help District 12 constituents understand the code enforcement process. When they see blight in their community, such as overgrown lots, vacant houses, trash and debris, my goal today is to make my community residents know that this is a partnership and that we have to work together to fix our city and our communities. Council members Shepard and Norwood spearheaded the establishment of a code enforcement commission to study blight and to look at best practices in other cities to come up with ways to eradicate code violations in the city of Atlanta. There's no place like home, and when Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast 10 years ago, New Orleanians found a new place to call home in Atlanta. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrew traveled to Atlanta to express his gratitude for the way the city embraced his storm-worn people a decade ago. He was welcomed by Mayor Reed and members of the Atlanta City Council. More than a million people were displaced during the hurricane, with Atlanta receiving one of the largest populations of evacuees. The reason I'm here is to really tell the people of Atlanta thank you uh, because if it wasn't for people in Atlanta, people all over the country, New Orleans would have never been able to get back to where it is today. And to have a mayor of Mayor Landrieu's uh, caliber and quality uh, really travel the country to say thank you 10 years later, I think speaks to the kind of class individual he is and exceptional leader he is. Mayor Landrieu says New Orleans is not only surviving but thriving now. And while he's grateful for the city of Atlanta, he reminded New Orleanians living here that the door to their hometown is wide open for them to return. A new partnership between Simon Properties and the Atlanta Police Department is aimed at keeping you safer during the holiday shopping season. The 235 security cameras at both Phipps Plaza and Lenox Mall were added to the Video Integration Center, or VIC for short. Those uh, cameras are going to assist us greatly in additional eyes, especially during the shopping seasons as, the, as that is just around the corner. So these cameras are outside as well as inside should anything take place. Lieutenant Browning says this expanded capability increases APD's situational awareness, but she cautions that shoppers should do their part as well. The Atlanta Police Clean Car Campaign uh, advocates a very clean car, nothing left in the car, no purses, no uh, GPS uh, devices or anything like that in the car while it's in the parking lot. The addition of the 235 cameras brings the total number of private and public cameras in VIC to 5,600. APD hopes to increase that number to 10,000 over the next two years. The Operation Shield Video Integration Center is a joint effort by APD and the Atlanta Police Foundation. The Atlanta Police Foundation and the Atlanta Track Club held Atlanta's finest 5K. Over 1,200 runners showed up for the event that raises money for Crime Stoppers Greater Atlanta. It's a community awareness fundraiser where anybody can be involved. It's not a huge gala or a big fancy party. It's a, it's a, it's a race. It's a 5K, so you bring your family out and help raise money for the rewards for the Crime Stopper Fund. Sergeant Baldini says community involvement is the foundation for Crime Stopper's success. The money that we raise here goes directly to the fund that pays out the rewards for Crime Stoppers Greater Atlanta. We don't receive any uh, legislative or city funds for the rewards, so it all comes from community fundraising and private donations. Anonymous tips called into Crime Stoppers Greater Atlanta has helped police capture almost a thousand wanted criminals. Callers are eligible to claim reward money if their tips lead to an arrest and conviction. If you have a tip, call them at 404-577-TIPS. That's 404-577-8477. All callers remain anonymous. Each year, parents spend big bucks on school supplies, but what happens when moms and dads can't afford it? One organization is lending a hand. Phyllis Jackson has more on Kids in Need. There's a whole lot of shopping going on. This isn't your average office supply store. No groceries here. 
It's a special place for Georgia teachers who want to make sure their students are well equipped for learning. This is Kids in Need, part of the Atlanta Community Food Bank. Simply put, this place provides year-round school supplies for kids who need them. Dr. Derek Cunningham is a science teacher. Whenever a child will have a pencil, there's no problem. I have several pencils. Here, take one. Schools that have 80% free or reduced lunch are eligible for the program. Kids in Need reaches out to schools and invite teachers to simply make an appointment and shop for free, removing a burden as many teachers dip into their own purses or wallets to meet the needs of the classroom. We have lots of opportunities to make these teachers happy as well as just give them a little shot in the arm and gear them up for the challenge that they have of teaching these students on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, last year, Kids in Need actually helped to serve over 8,500 teachers visits. That includes teachers from remote areas like Hall and Walton County, where they're so far away that the supplies are delivered to them so they don't have to make the drive. Once the teachers finish their shopping, they head toward checkout very convenient. Teachers go back to their cars and drive into the garage. Fill that up with a flat stuff. Volunteers load up the trunk with school supplies. An opportunity that came by way of generous donors who want to see kids get ahead. It's all about them. It's all about securing their future and securing our future as well because they are tomorrow's leaders. Well, school supplies are still desperately needed if you can help. Here are the top three needs. Paper, pencils, and notebooks. Reporting from Kids in Need in Atlanta, Phyllis Jackson for City Channel 26. Coming up, Grant Park was the place to be for music, food, and a whole lot of shade. And we sit down with District 9 Council Member Felicia Moore. Stay with us. ATL 26. Forward, together. Covering Atlanta inside City Hall and out in the community. Keeping you connected to the people who are making a difference. Transforming lives through service and giving. ATL 26. Forward, together. Council Member Felicia Moore is with us today. Ms. Moore, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. The City of Atlanta is improving roads, bridges, sidewalks, public facilities, and things of that nature. What infrastructure projects would you like to see? Well, of course, District 9, like other areas of the city, has a long list of things that we would like. In terms of public facilities, we do have some recreation centers that need some work, as well as many of our fire stations that need to be upgraded or new ones built. So that is certainly something that we're looking at. In addition, District 9, I believe, has the largest number of unpaved roads in the city, but they're very expensive. And so majority of the District 9 local allocation that I have some purview over is actually going to pave some of these unpaved roads. They're costly to the city as well because they have to keep coming out and re-graveling it. So we're looking forward to getting those done and hopefully having enough money over to do some sidewalks body cameras. Why have you always been in favor of video cameras on Atlanta police officers? Well, I think that, of course, it's the tide has changed across the country, particularly starting in Ferguson, where we saw that the, the uh, having a body camera on by an officer would have given us a closer and more real perspective about what happened. And I think that this has taken off across the country and is certainly something that our police department should be looking into. And frankly, I was really very surprised and pleased to know that Chief Turner had already started an initiative to do a pilot program on them prior to Ferguson. The city of Atlanta is trying to get a handle on code enforcement. What are some of the concerns of District 9 constituents when it comes to code and zoning violations? Well, of course, the public safety aspect of it, having these open and vacant buildings, you have children, things happen in these vacant uh, structures, as well as their unsightliness and the health concerns that come along with it. And to that end, because code enforcement has become such a major issue, I have hired on my staff Dustin Hillis, who is working part-time, but very specifically working on code enforcement efforts. And he's been very instrumental in us blogging them and being able to track them in my office and um, also getting some resolution. 
Grove Park. That park is a nice amenity for the community and you were there for the opening of the new playground yes. and you hosted a neighborhood jazz concert in Grove Park. Yes, and so we're trying to do things in all parts of the district. Grove Park is an up and coming area. It's an area that has many code issues, so that's going to be our first number one priority. It's also a neighborhood that will be host to the Beltline projects, particularly around the quarry, Maddox Park, and so there is a lot of potential things that are positive that the can happen in the Grove Park area. And congratulations on earning your master's thank degree. Thank you, thank you. What made you decide to go back and do that? Well, I have always wanted to do that. I wanted to do it after I graduated from college and then I didn't get into school and then I just took over, life took over. But it's always been one of those things on my to-do list that I wanted to have. And I decided to finally go ahead and get started. And I did and I went to Central Michigan University. Uh, they have a global campus here, was able to attend in-class training there, um, met some great professors and great students, even some from the city of Atlanta. We have other city of Atlanta employees who were in classes with me and my classmates, and uh, I'm just so happy. I still can't believe I finally finished it. You know, trying to juggle life and doing that uh, and counsel was kind of difficult at times, but it was uh, an accomplishment I'm proud of. Councilmember Felicia Moore, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. When we come back, the Motor City brings its music to Midtown Atlanta, and fans of comic books, fantasy, and science fiction gathered right here in Atlanta for the annual Dragon Con convention. Back in a moment. How would you feel if every day, every time you left the house, went to the store, on a date, or just went anywhere? You had to think about how not to get harassed or attacked. How would you feel? Just because I smiled, had too much to drink, wore a short skirt, or even went to your house doesn't mean I was asking for it or had it coming. No does not mean yes or try harder. It just means no. And that's all that should have to be said. This is Mayor Kasim Reed, and I'm asking you to please take a stand against sexual assault. For information and tools you can use, please go to www.atlantaga.gov slash take a stand. Step up, speak up, man up for women, the ones you know and the ones you don't. Thank you. Motown, the musical, is the real-life story of the one-of-a-kind sound that hit the airways in 1959 and remains relevant today. See for yourself how it took Atlanta by storm. The sweet sound of Motown. It's unmistakable. When you hear it, you know it. Get ready, Motown the Musical is here. The true American dream story of Motown founder Barry Gordy comes to life on stage. The production is breaking barriers and mesmerizing audiences on Broadway and right here in Atlanta at the Fox Theater. It's really surreal, you know, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a full circle moment for me because, you know, I grew up wanting, wishing, wondering, will I ever hit this stage? And then last night for it to be the first time and to see the the house which is like my favorite house because you know the sky and, and all the beautiful architecture to see it from the stage it was it was it blew my mind galen j williams is a cast member of this hit production born and raised right here in atlanta the 24 year old artist attended tri-city high school known for its visual and performing arts magnet program and it was like ninth grade when you know doing um the rehearsals for shows and uh, learning that discipline and that focus that it takes and but also realizing the joy that I felt in doing it and you know realizing that working towards it didn't feel like work that's when I kind of realized I was like hmm I think I think this is what I want to do so Tri-City is like definitely planted that seed for me you know? I've got sunshine on a cloudy day while on tour Williams and some of the cast dropped by City Hall they sang some of the more than 40 classic songs that take us on a trip down memory lane. Oh, 
Being a Tammy Terrell favorite, performer Ashley Tamar Davis plays several roles in the musical, including Diana Ross. Not only do you get to wear the gowns and the amazing wigs, but you're really like embodying the greatness of her feminist attitude towards knowing who she was, even when she was young, when she met Barry Gordy. Motown the Musical depicts the singing and swinging ride of Gordy's journey. The mogul launched the careers of global superstars like Diana Ross, Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, and Michael Jackson. Back then, the Motown sound transformed America with its lyrics and rhythms. Watch me now, hey, and now, the musical will have your toes tapping and hands clapping for the cast. We're dancing in the street. Motown the Musical made its Broadway debut in the spring of 2013. Across the country, it runs through next year. The Pittsburgh community celebrates its 30th reunion. It was founded as a black working class suburb in the 1800s and named because of the similarities to the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania steel mills. The community is close to downtown Atlanta, the Beltline Trail, and stadiums. Residents are trying to bring economic resurgence, revitalization, and a better quality of life. They are so proud of Pittsburgh. So people are here that I've met that have come from other parts of the city that like now live in other parts of the city, but they still are actively involved with Pittsburgh. They come back, they bring their kids back, they're all entrenched, they love Pittsburgh. Council Member Shepherd says they will connect, engage, and work together to create new memories for the growth and development of Pittsburgh. Organizers of the annual Grant Park Summer Shade Festival wanted you to come out and have some fun. Every summer, thousands gather under Grant Park's sprawling canopy of trees for a positive, family-oriented weekend. You've got all this space and people, you've got some good music, you've got good food, um, some nice vendors around selling you odds and ends. It's just, it's a great way to enjoy summertime in Atlanta. It's been 13 years and the festival is still going strong. It has the potential to be the biggest movie premiere of the 21st century, and it was in full force during Dragon Con this year. Troy Danica shows us how excited Star Wars fans are for the upcoming installment of the space saga, Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Dragon Con is one of the largest science fiction and fantasy conventions in the nation. 70,000 people turned out for this year's event, and many of them came costumed as their favorite characters. One of the more prominent themes, Star Wars, and it's a big year for the episodic space saga. Chewie, we're home. The highly anticipated Star Wars Episode 7: The Force Awakens is due in theaters this December. The new film features the original heroes of the 1977 film, Mark Hamill as the Jedi warrior Luke Skywalker, Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia, and Harrison Ford as Han Solo. Oh yeah, this guy too. The fictional world of Star Wars spans movies, books, and TV shows. One of the more popular characters from the books is Grand Admiral Thrawn, an Imperial holdout who goes on the offensive against the rebels after the events of Return of the Jedi. When I was offered the Star Wars books, the Thrawn trilogy, one of the things I wanted to do was a book or a series that was Star Wars, but not what George Lucas had already done. So that meant no Vader-type villain, no Emperor-type villain. Timothy Zahn created the character of Thrawn and many other indelible aspects of that universe. What is the more dangerous type of villain? And it occurred to me that the, the, the more dangerous opponent is one who can lead by loyalty. Vader and the Emperor rule by fear and manipulation. Director J.J. Abrams is committed to bringing the audience a film that is true to the original. That means less computer-generated special effects, more on-set locations. It's a hopeful sign many fans are glad to see. It gets a, the actors a place to, to relate to the setting and the environment that they're in. And I think it just adds to the, their character and adds to the reality of the, of the world. The love for Star Wars is always evident at Dragon Con. Convention goers are quick to snap a picture or two with costume fans, and panels featuring the franchise's stars are always packed. We all know that this isn't about us. This is about the best story ever told. And that love goes both ways. 
For the tens of thousands of people that attend Dragon Con every year, this isn't just a time to see a parade and gawk at the myriad of costumes. It's a time to be surrounded by like-minded fans. It's a time to geek out over seeing the stars of your favorite show or movie. It's a time to shake off that part of you that only exists Monday through Friday and to let go and embrace the weird and wonderful world of fandom. For City Talk, I'm Troy Danicus. Up next, one more outdoor barbecue before Old Man Winter arrives. A small Atlanta-based theater company goes big and pushes the envelope. I'm Phyllis Jackson. We'll have more on Actors Express coming up on City Channel 26. Atlanta, a city of passion and purpose, shaped by a rich past, sights set on a bright future. The city's horizon is expanding daily with new attractions. The Atlanta streetcar keeping communities connected to what's happening. Valued education, entrepreneurship create a thriving environment for startups. I'm Mayor Kasim Reed. In Atlanta, our doors of opportunity are always open. Just bring your dreams and build them here. A popular Broadway show graces the Atlanta stage. A small local theater company showcases its take on the classic Rent. Phyllis Jackson introduces us to Actors Express. Seasons of love. Seasons of love. love. Rehearsal for the big number. This talented group is part of Actors Express. This unique Atlanta theater company is going big with a production of Rent. And the practice time is paying off. Express was founded in the late 1980s. It's considered Atlanta's theater gym. Well, they're hoping to spread the news about this place and fill some additional seats. Actors Express is really a really intimate theatrical venue here in the city. Um, we use all local talent, um, so we're seeing new works on stage. We're seeing old things that you've seen before reimagined in a new way. And that new way is apparently catching on, drawing fresh faces and new talent who want to experience something a little different, something that pushes the envelope. Greg Hunter is the youngest actor here, Buford, Georgia, born and raised. He says he was determined to land a role. I gotta be in the show. I don't care who I play. I don't care if I'm like a person in the corner. I just wanna be in the show and have the opportunity to work at this space because I've seen a lot of shows here that I absolutely love. Jennifer Alice Ackers, feeling the love, saying the Atlanta market is special because the shows have shorter runs, opposite of Broadway, which could roll several months at a time. In a town like Atlanta, you can see 50 different shows in the course of a year. They all run a month to six weeks to eight weeks, and then it's on to the next project. So you're constantly evolving as an artist. 525,600 minutes. How do you measure the life of a woman or a man? Anytime someone like does something like a vocal riff or a run, or we all sing together in unison, the audience is 150% here for it. It really is. It's electrifying. Electrifying and cutting edge. The selection of material carefully executed with the goal of stepping outside the box. Doing a show like Rent, I think, is something that can bring the community together and see that acceptance and equality are things that will keep us strong and keep us growing. Reporting from Actors Express in Atlanta, Phyllis Jackson for City Channel 26. For more on Actors Express, visit their website at actors-express.com. Cypress Street Bar always marks the end of summer with an annual pig roast. Now in its eighth year, the celebration was filled with cold drinks, music, and a 160-pound whole hog smoked overnight. Hungry attendees had several pork menus to choose from while enjoying barbecue on the patio. We're doing our eighth annual pig roast. Amazing, we do it every year, we've been doing it. Uh, people are having a great time. Big family event, community uh, support. It's, it's kind of funny to see like the neighborhood wake up to the, the smell. Everybody loves like the smell of uh, barbecue and, and all that. The pig roast closes out summer and welcomes in cooler temperatures. 
people came out to Woodruff Park in their later hosen and girdles for the 12th annual German Beer Festival. Visitors had the chance to sample over three dozen German brands, and all of the beers were brewed according to the German beer purity law that governs the process for making German beers. The law was established in 1516 and prohibits brewers from using anything other than barley, hops, and water in their recipes. Folks were also treated to traditional music and food. The National Black Arts Festival is known for bringing world-class programming to Atlanta. And with an assortment of performances, workshops, and film screenings, this season is no different. One film gives us a closer look at an artistic master with roots here in our city. School Days. Spike Lee's 1988 musical drama is in the spotlight again in Atlanta. This time, it's the National Black Arts Festival that's paying special attention to the movie. The focus this season, dance. This is a screening and there's discussion. And the discussion is really to um, look at the film from a historical vantage point. In the time that it was made to now, what has changed? What has evolved? How are we represented in dance now in film? NBAF's film series starts with the old forms of dance in the 18th century and takes a look at how they've evolved in the 21st century. So dance is just that form that over the history of African American experience, like music, it's been one of the underpinnings of our culture and our cultural legacy and our cultural patrimony. In partnership with the Cinema, Television and Emerging Media Studies program at Morehouse College, NBAF brought the discussion back to the film's origin, Lee's alma mater. You have the mix of sort of African roots, sort of, a, you know, sort of modern dance and ballet all in the mix in the film. So it's a true sort of celebration of a mix of styles um, that we've seen. And then you have Step. <laughs> The campus screening of school days was packed, mainly with Morehouse students eager to soak up the social and artistic lessons this film has to teach, decades later. Well, I mean, you know, as an art form, you know, I mean, dance is, uh, you know, critical to the expression of, you know, black people and in black life. It plays a, a very essential role, I think, in how we uh, communicate, how we talk to one another. not dance, the music and dance is not just sort of periphery, it's, it's not something that he's got there just for decor, if you will. It is important and essential to telling the story. For Lee, dance is a major part of the narrative in school days. It puts African American culture in the forefront as it entertains, educates, and inspires. The NBAF season wraps up this month. To take part in the remaining events, go to nbaf.org for details. Thank you for watching City Talk. I'm Thermese Bevel.